You like my new glasses? Not so much, no. Whatever. I think they're pretty impressive, but here, here's the deal. Look, it gets even better. Hold on. Huh? Huh? You like that? <laughs> they're still terrible. Huh? You're ridiculous. <laughs> These, we went to uh, we went to the dollar store, Dollar Tree, whatever that place is called, to get some cleaning supplies yesterday. And I mean, come on, guys, for a dollar, this is uh, these are pretty pretty high level novelty glasses for a dollar. Come on, how long do you think it's gonna be before when my claws snaps right off? I thought you bought those for Ariella, our seven year old friend. I don't know what you're talking about. They're adult size. Can't you tell? <laughs> Just do one. Uh, We're going to do the other one. What is happening, everybody? Woo, woo, woo. All right. I'll take those off because you can't really see very well. Come on. Just saying. Uh, what's happening? Hello. Welcome. It's Sunday. This is Sunday Live Hall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at this, guys. Two weeks in a row. <laughs> Pretty impressive, if you ask me. We have been. We uh, might actually be people that have a YouTube channel. <laughs> we might actually have to be that. Um, anyway, if you uh, haven't been here for a while, so maybe you've forgotten about us, or maybe you're new to the show. I'm Katie. This is Vicky, aka Victoria, when she wants to be taken very seriously. Yep. Okay, aka not impressed with my glasses. Aka totally not going to be surfing the web during today's show because she's so bored by what I'm showing. Right. 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 For AKA, sure. Aka. My fiance. That's how it goes. I've been her fiance for a long time. I now. know, a really long time. Man. One of those really drawn out engagements. <laughs> it's pretty pathetic at hey, our age. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Casey uh Casey's been engaged longer than us. That's true. Yeah. So Casey seriously I think needs we're to okay. put, a, put another ring on it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, two weeks. Uh although I will say we are not gonna be doing our show next Sunday because we will be in Oregon visiting my family. Mm -hmm. Um we're going there early Thursday, coming back on Monday. Uh, but Sunday is going to be our day to uh, hang out in Portland. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, so yeah, so we're going to get there Thursday morning. And then we're going to be seeing my family, hanging out with my family for the weekend. And then Sunday morning, we're going to head up to Portland just for one night. Uh, one day and one night mm -hmm. and, and do some Portlandy stuff, which really just means eat as much food as possible. And shopping. Well, that too, but there's food in Oregon that they don't have here, so I gotta make the rounds. Okay, whatever. Um, anyway, actually Thursday when we get there, we're gonna go, I'm thinking Pine State Biscuits because it's impossible to go there on the weekends, but if you go on a weekday, you might be all right. It is delicious. I took you there before. Mm -hmm. You are very excited about going again. I quite delicious. I'm not, I'm not that excited, but yes. Uh, excuse me. You remember it every time I talk about it. You know what it, what it is. Okay. So anyway, guys, uh, what's happening? Uh, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. And uh, we got a shoe for you guys. We do. And even though we don't have a show next Sunday, the next few weeks following that, we are bound to have some special guests. Um, That's true. Yeah, we have we have some peeps coming to town, so yeah. there will be some special guests. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. from, from uh, a lot of Pacific Northwest people. Well, that, well, one anyway, I guess. Um, we got Allison, and we got Lorna. It's gonna be very mm -hmm. exciting. We'll have to get them on. It's true. If not a Sunday show, a Friday night show, um, maybe do a No Pants Friday when Allison is here because we will have her on a Friday night. So, uh, but yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Allison, right there, Allison. We, we Allison, I'm gonna make her buy that you. dead horse, beating no, that dead horse. No, this because you don't learn, so we have to make make sure to bring up as much as possible. Allison, when you get here, I'm gonna make her buy you at least a couple egg McMuffins uh, to make up for it. Yeah, and she's not allowed to touch it and try to throw it away, like my sour cream, like my chips. Okay, so just saying, I throw uh, away all the stuff. Uh, and and speaking of chips, I just want to say um, I just want to say to Dana, who's in the, who's in the chat there. I hope that you weren't planning on eating the rest of those Ruffles potato chips that you left here, because guess what? They got thrown away, and it wasn't me. Okay, she's got a thing against Ruffles. She decides that they've been here too long, and you're out of luck. So yeah, you owe her a quarter of a bag of Ruffles. I, I owe her a quarter of a bag of stale Ruffles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Indeed. Seriously, Kelly, I will <laughs> never live that down. I will never live anything down. These people are like <laughs> elephants with big mouths. They never forget anything and they constantly want to remind it to me. Well, because it keeps happening. Well, you think you would learn? You think the humiliation? I am not humiliated about throwing away gross old food. It's not. That's the problem. See, so you guys, this is this is why she doesn't learn. It's not gross old food. It is perfectly good food <sighs> that she throws away. Ugh, disgusting. Anyway, Allison, Lorna is coming after you are here. You she is be coming gone. on the sixth. Yeah. And then Mo and Linda come to town also on the sixth, mm. maybe the seventh. Mm -hmm. They're not staying with us, but we intend to spend some time with the ladies. Yeah. Uh, and also Sally and Rudy are Rudy. coming to town. Uh, Friday the 5th is when our local meetup, we're having, uh, the cookout here at our house. And I know that, uh, Rudy and Rudy. Sally are in town for that as well as our local meetup peeps. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. It's all going to be good. Anyway. So yeah, this is our Sunday live hall show. We break it up into three parts. The first part, we look at our real numbers for the last week, which this week, not pretty, guys. Not pretty at all. It's not. And eBay, uh, what the F? Well, not even just eBay. I mean, I think overall there's, you know, and listen, it's, it's totally unpredictable what your sales are ever going to be like at any time of year. There's definitely some trends that you tend to see happen year after year, but it's never predictable. And right now, eBay, Etsy, my Etsy's like cut in half right now. I know yours is way down. Half. Um, so it's, you know, whatever it might be, it, it probably has some to do with, you know, restrictions lifting a lot throughout the uh, U.S. It has to do with summertime. You know, summertime tends to have a slowdown, particularly in certain categories like clothing. Uh, so it just, who it's knows? It's not quite but summer yet. But, but there's I mean, a lot yeah. of graduations happening in different parts of the country right now, especially around here, uh, parts of the country where schools get out earlier. So, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Uh, obviously, we'll talk about the elephant in the room briefly. There is all the item specific changes that came down through eBay over this past week. Uh, as usual, this is the third time that this has happened. It does mess up categories yeah. for a while. It does. It's just reality. It they are mapping and then they're over mapping over old information and it just throws a wrench into those particular categories mm -hmm. for a significant period of time, meaning that people using the left-hand search navigation are probably not finding uh, th those items in those specific yeah. categories easily. So whenever there is a big update on, on the eBay platform, the platform is a bazillion years old and they're working on a dinosaur and they're constantly trying to like give it some epinephrine and like, you know, shock it, uh, and make it work. More importantly, eBay is trying to take away all our porno. <laughs> What's up with that, man? Why are they taking away our nips and our bits? I don't know huh? what's wrong with you. What's up with that? Uh, Actually, not taking away all our nips, just the female nips. Because <sighs> they made it very clear in their in in their little thing that it's only female nipples and areolas, whatever you call them. Uh, Males, totally okay, which I feel like in 2021, we should be past that by now, right. guys. Seriously, I don't, whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Penthouse, uh, okay. Playboy, okay. But uh, it's just, I'm just saying, guys, that's the real elephant in the room for me, just saying. So. Well, it is going to throw a wrench into the many thousands of sellers that sell in specifically adult categories. Uh, eBay has always separated the adult category from the mainstream category. That's why I have two stores. I have occasionally come into large lots of adult content and I never wanted to mix it with my, um, you know, with my mainstream products because if someone's browsing your store anyway i just didn't want to get into it so i had a separate store i haven't had anything in the store in a couple of years but I, it's still there um i obviously i'm not going to use that store anymore yeah so it's just a little bit, bit of a bummer i wish they'd focus a little bit more on things like i don't know re reprints of vintage t-shirts that have completely saturated uh the market but that's just me guys and that does affect mm -hmm. me a little bit more but i mean come on bring back our nips guys Come on. Um, anyway, so I don't know where anybody's going to sell their nude stuff anymore. Honestly, it's I don't know. I don't know. I don't think there's any platform that is going to allow for it anymore, I think, uh, which is going to make it that much more valuable because vintage 
um, especially, I don't mean the mainstream crap that everybody can get for free online, but like the vintage stuff, there are collectors that collect vintage porn, vintage, vintage erotica, things like that. If they're not going to be able to find it on sites like eBay or Etsy, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be allowed on any of the other sites. Yeah. I, I, I don't quote me on that, but, um, that's going to create a void, uh, and a hole for somebody to create a different platform specifically. All right. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> a different platform to sell those type of products. So if anybody has a few million dollars to invest in a platform specifically to deal with X-rated product and erotica, I mean, now is your time. Uh, I, I did you know. see something about as far as like why they're doing it. One of the things I saw, one of the reasons behind it is something about like uh, wanting to fight like revenge porn, which I'm like, is that really like a huge problem on eBay that warrants taking away potential sales? No, for all these I, I don't just... think so. I think it's, I think like anything else, you know, that has happened in society over the years, there is a lot of overcorrection to correct faults and to correct things that should be corrected. So people go overcorrect things. That means that normal stuff gets, um, you know, hurt by it. And then it comes back to us somewhere in the middle where things are yeah. still allowed. So right now, I think that this is an overcorrection on eBay's part. It's not one that they're likely to go back on. I, I don't see them like reinstating an adult category mm. if they get rid of it. Um, or maybe so, it's bringing on the uh, Walmart dude as CEO, uh, something like that. When you know, because remember Walmart and how they wouldn't sell any CDs with explicit. No, mm -hmm. they did. Uh, it's they sold they wouldn't allow CDs with adult content like the explicit I remember stickers. I, worked, I worked at Walmart I had to put those stickers on things right so the so the point is they wouldn't even sell the CDs but movies they would totally sell rated R movies with full chock full of violence and sex so the reasoning never really makes sense but let's move on one heck of a thrifter wants to know if I got over yesterday's fits for their ridiculously huge sale they had this weekend yes I did in fact I'm wearing Right now, my new Yesterday's Fits t-shirt. They just came out with new merch. And of course, I got to support the boys. I'm sure you're laughing at something inappropriate being said in the chat. My favorite thing I that am. they came out with, though, are hats. And so I'm pretty stoked about having a new Yesterday's Fits hat. Uh, but yeah, one of the nice things having a relationship with those guys is um, because I buy from them regularly. I'm one of their main... Uh, bulk buyers is that I get to come in early for stuff like that. So I actually w went there on Friday, the day before the big sale mm -hmm. and scored a bunch of stuff. So, and so our friend Mike too. Yes. And I brought along Mike. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then, although I did see the next day that uh, on Saturday that our friend Barry Afro vintage dropped off like 300 plus t-shirts to put on their $5 uh, sale. So I didn't even get to see any of those guys, but, oh. but yeah, they still have a sale going right now. So you should uh, check them out. Anywho. I was laughing at Allison's of comment. Course, of course. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so our first part of the show is looking at our real numbers. Middle part of the show, we look at some of our sales highlights this week, which I had really had to scrounge up some of those because this one over here decided that she wanted to share 11 different things that she sold. And so uh, I, I pulled, I pulled from a, two weeks ago, a couple of them. No wonder. We hadn't had shows in a, a while. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't I'm just sell. Okay, well, I didn't, didn't know. Show. I didn't know you were going to go there. Um, and in the last part of our show, we look at some of the stuff that we got uh, recently. So I have some more stuff from recent hauls from yesterday's fits. You have some stuff both from Atlanta as well as mm -hmm. your trip to the bins this week. So you got some actually have I some hard goods. I did a bins pickup. I do have some hard goods. I have mostly hard goods this time, guys. What? Mostly hard goods. Some semi soft goods. Uh, they do not belong in the adult category. Um, and yeah. 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 Anyway, all I'll say, the only other thing I'll say about all the censorship stuff is, is uh, uh, worry about yourself. If I want to buy it, let me buy it. Leave me alone. Leave me my nips and bits. Okay. Bye. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's look at our numbers. They're real sad for us. They're sad. Remember, considering guys, everyone who is purchasing on eBay is entering into a legally binding contract and is supposed to be 18 years old to have an eBay account. Mm -hmm. The fact that they are censoring something that you have to actually acknowledge that you're over 18 to even get into the adult category yeah. uh, is a problem. I, not, think, I think it's a problem. We're not your kid's babysitter. OK, it's mm -hmm. you're the one who's responsible for making sure your kids don't buy those nips. OK, so knock it off. Leave us alone. Let's have our stuff. Anyway, oh, Tommy, I see your comment there. Let's see some free bird shoes. It wasn't me that scored those, uh, but I did see that post about somebody getting like four pairs of free bird shoes at like the bins or something. Interesting. 
Um, all right, let's look at our numbers. And again, guys, we get it. So for some of you, these numbers uh, would be an amazing week for you, but uh, we operate at a different level it, for some. And I just and hired other people. my third person, yeah. people. And there's other people and who- And my sales went into the toilet. There's other people who make our numbers look pretty measly. So uh, we're all at different levels. And for us, this was a pretty slow week eBay, I mean, you were down. You were down. You're, today, you're down to less than a thousand for the last seven days. What happened? You're eBay supposed to be my hero. To, you're eBay supposed to be decided, my sugar mama. Listen, eBay decided to shit all over my store is basically what happened. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still adding the same amount of items every week. Um, and my sales are down year to date about $12,000 so far. Yeah. So I'm just going to say, and that's across all platforms. So I'm just going to say the last two or three months have really sucked butt. Yeah. I will say my year today is probably doing okay just because I had a really terrible at least six weeks last year when the shutdown first happened. And so I definitely made more this year during that time period. Now it's going downhill. So we'll see. All right. Let's go ahead and share the screen here. Um, start with my numbers. And yeah, I managed, I had the exact same number of orders. This is from last Sunday through yesterday, the 15th. Same number of orders on eBay, 23. Etsy, only three orders, guys. I think last week I had four, but I think I made like $5 more this week. It's pretty sad. I had one teeny, teeny, tiny little Instagram sale and uh, seven on Grailed and Mercari. Only one of those was Mercari. So Grailed, Grailed's actually been a little bit more steady, which is nice. Not huge numbers, but still steady. Um, so I had 34 total outgoing orders. Let me go ahead and make that bigger on the screen. So eBay gross sales, $1,555.19. Meh. And Etsy, whew, I think last week was $190 something. So wow, I really went up this week, guys. $206.17. Instagram, like I said, very small sales, $25. And then Grail to Mercari together, $342. So I did manage to make it over $2,000. Um, which is something, uh, so $2,120 and 36 Yeah, but your net is crap. How dare you? Uh, my shipping 159 and one penny. And then you can see my fees broken out there and my cost of goods 460. That's definitely, uh, why my net's looking not so great. Uh, cause I had a couple of like bigger sales, but they were ones I had paid up for. So my net one thousand two hundred and fifty nine dollars and fifty two cents. Uh, my gross average sale price sixty two sixty. I like to be above seventy, um, uh, but I had a lot for some reason on eBay. I had so many like super like old old stuff sell like for twenty dollars twenty five dollars, which for me those are very very low sales. And so even though I had one pretty big sale this week, it's like it didn't even really help all that much with bringing my average up. Um, and net average sale price thir Sorry, 3704. So I'm just going to go ahead and say my week was meh and only helped out by like the last couple of days because otherwise it was real meh. Um, but thank God that I at least yeah, got over. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Yeah. So let's look at yours. So mine is not much better. Uh, briefly, I just wanted to uh, welcome. We have a new sub in the in the chat there, Early Bird Picker. Thanks for uh, subbing and, and joining us today. Uh, let's see. So. For me, this is where it's really bad. I usually do about 50 orders on eBay. Like it's like, I don't know, 40 orders maybe. Yeah. Uh, 22 orders on eBay. What Ooh. the actual F? 22. I may as well be like a really slow part-timer. Yeah. Uh, seven on Etsy, nine on Poshmark, three on Macari, nothing on Facebook Marketplace. I'm no longer posting on Facebook Marketplace. I did throw about 15 items up on Depop. I've had a lot of likes, no purchases. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with likes yet. I don't know anything about the platform yet, but I'll let you know. Uh, 41 total orders, 13.51 on eBay. That's yeah, a real low for you. For me, my, my a low is 2,500. So uh, 1351 on eBay. I generally do 2,500 to 3,000. It's been real bad. Uh, 674 on Etsy. So look, you did three times as much on Etsy this week. What's up with that? I had a couple of big sales on Etsy. Yeah. Uh, 315 on Poshmark, 163 on Macari for a total of 2,500. Just, ugh. I really, really, really try to be at $3,500 in gross sales a week. Uh, thankfully, I do have other platforms. Thank God for List Perfectly, because if I were trying to survive on eBay lately, I might as well just like gouge my eyeballs out with a spork. Um, 223 shipping, 
162.03 in eBay fees, 57.32 on Etsy fees, 63 Poshmark fees, 22.09 Macari fees, total of 527.44 total costs. My cost of goods are very low because almost everything that you're going to see that I sold was either free or something from the bins uh, or part of a large bulk purchase where I paid very low for it. So 109 was my cost of goods. Leaves me at 1867.49 total net. So, so thankfully I have a low cost of goods because that's not a horrible week as far as my net sales. But my gross average sale price is right where I like it to be, right about $60. So it's 6107. And my net average sale price again was pretty good because of a low cost of goods at $45. Now, I'm reading here in the chat uh, that there is some uh, rumors happening about, Gary says, about um, downgrading store subscriptions, making the There's sales slow. Rumors. There's always rumors. I will say I am not a, a, an eBay cheerleader, uh, and neither is Katie, where we're not going to tell you like it is. You guys know that by now if you already watch us. Uh, I do not think there is any truth to that type of rumor. I do think that that's probably one of the bullshit ones. Yeah. Um, I, you know, there's I, no purpose. There's there, no, I there's saw, no I saw the to zero eBay. increase in sales by going to an anchor store. So I do not expect to see a decrease in sales in the premium store. So that's one that I'm going to say. I don't think that that help holds any water whatsoever. Well, and you got to go with the whole, uh, you know, follow the money thing. There's no upside to eBay to, to affect our sales like that because we switch to, you know, a different store level. It doesn't make any difference to them. Um, now, do we think that maybe some of the stuff that they're doing, the maintenance stuff and the changes they're making to the site, and maybe it does have, you know, some things with managed payments, who knows? There's always, a, you never know how different that type of stuff. Are. Absolutely. Always and that's not my purposeful. Store. It's just, you know, that's part of uh, potentially part of just what happens when things are changed on the site. Yeah. Um, that type of stuff. I, I absolutely know for sure affects site visibility and does uh, affect some people's sales. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm positive at that. I've been on the platform long enough that every time something major happens and changes happen on the platform, mm -hmm. uh, my sales do drop off, my traffic drops off. So um, I'm just speaking for myself, but that's one that I don't think that's a rumor. I think that that's a fact. I don't think it's an intentional thing, of course. Uh, you know, eBay does not want anybody's sales to slow down either. Obviously, they want people to sell their sell yeah. stuff so they can make their money too. Like, so. I don't know if this happened to anybody else, but like I'll do a search on eBay for, and I'll use some keywords and it'll show me the results for those keywords. And then at the bottom, it runs out and then it says, you know, doesn't, was it say something like uh, not, not the exact keywords, but similar. And then it shows you results. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it'll be the same keywords. It'll be the same keywords. I don't know. And there's no reason why those things shouldn't show up in the regular search. So I'm just saying to me, it's more like potential glitches or issues with the site are more likely to blame as opposed to purposeful things yeah. because of. And as, as uh, Greg says, the best advice did come from team money a few years ago. It's just shut up and list. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you want to sell your stuff, you have to have it listed. And the more variety you have listed, the better the chance that you're going to sell mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. So and use things like list perfectly to cross post to other platforms. So you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Okay. Grandma should have taught you don't put all your eggs in one basket. All right. Grandma. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's an old saying. Uh, but anyway, so for sure, like, cause I do think that there's something to be said for you don't just stick your head in the sand and expect everything to be, to be better and just listen more. No, of course you not. You pay attention to issues and you go, okay. I'm you need to change, you need to change uh, with trends. You need to make sure that you're up on the changes with item specifics and things like that to optimize your listings mm -hmm. for what is currently going to make your listings the most uh, visible and attractive to buyers. You absolutely can't just stick your head in the sand and just keep listing. That is absolutely true. You also want to make sure that you're listing items that people want. You can't just list any old shit expected to sell. There are people yeah. that come into our group all the time or message Katie or message myself, messaging Katie gets you nowhere because she doesn't respond, but they message myself uh, and they ask questions like, why is my stuff not selling? Why, you know, I haven't had any sales. Listen, sales are slow for a lot of people, but if you're selling absolute junk and your pictures are terrible and you uh, are not willing to take advice or suggestion, then the chances are your sales are not yeah. going to get any better. You have, there are some really, really good sellers that know how to present their products. There is plenty on that platform. There is zero reason for someone to buy your crap that is too high priced with crappy photos. Mm -hmm. They're just not gonna do it. It's true. All right, let's look at some sales highlights. Let's look at some sales highlights. Um, starting with this. Look! 
Why would you do this to us? What is this crap? It's a vintage so doll. Rude. Part of my doll haul. Still selling the dolls. I still have some to list. I haven't gotten through all of those yet. They are they are definitely my death pile right now. Uh, I got bored and sick of listing dolls, so they kind of just sit there. Uh, so I do have some to list still. But this is one that listed, as you know, I paid less than a dollar a piece for all of these items. This one sold to Germany. Sold for the price you see there, $97.46. It was on sale. I paid about a dollar for it. Uh, and yeah, buyer paid full, uh, full shipping to Germany. So I shipped using, um, pirate ship, simple export rate. And I even made about $10 on the shipping. Nice. Very nice. All right. First up for me now, this was not a huge sale or anything, but if you remember me showing this t-shirt that is absolutely thrashed, it's got holes all over it. The neck's all stretched out. It's faded. Uh, it says Texas Longhorn Steer. It says somebody in Texas loves me. And I mean, look at it. It's just absolutely destroyed. Uh, bought this for like five bucks at, at yesterday's fits and um, sold for, I took an offer for 40. I might have sent out offers. 40 bucks, guys. 40 bucks for this. For this ratty t shirt with some weird. Uh, it's an awesome graphic, guys. Oh, and somebody in Texas loves me. And and look at that, somebody look is at that a, collar, is too. Look at that collar. That That's collar fun. is, like, so stretched out and ruffled and ratted and roached. It's, like, I don't understand these T-shirt sales, some of them. God bless them. I'm glad they buy from you, but I don't get it. It's good stuff. Uh, it's some good of them stuff. I get, some of them I don't. Uh, so, Teresa asked, how much have you made overall on the dolls so far? So, Teresa, I'm not like you. I don't keep a spreadsheet for specific uh, items. Uh, but since I've been selling more than 90 days between the clothing, the dolls, the doll clothes, accessories, and things that I pulled out of that house, I definitely have made over $4,000. I couldn't tell you exactly what it is, but it's definitely four times my money and there's still a lot left. I think it might've been more than that. Um, but yeah, there was a good several weeks where I, that was all I was selling. So, uh, Greg, I don't think it went to Texas. If I remember off the top of my head, I think it went to like New York, like Brooklyn or something weird like that. Because that's what they need, some roached out Texas t-shirt. Oh, that's awesome. To go sweat in it's the so summer. Cool. All right, go ahead. Uh, this also came out of that same hoarder house. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a, a vintage, what you see there, it's a vintage slip, but it has the petticoat or the full length crinoline underneath. Uh, this is circa 1960s ish. Um, and these are really popular for pinup uh, clothing. So people that want to wear period clothing. So this would have gone under a dress that someone wants some volume on. And it's easier to find shorter petticoats. So the longer full length ones are harder to find. Um, so this one actually sold for the price that you see there as well. This sold for, again, I paid maybe a dollar, sold for a hundred dollars and six cents. That was my 23% sale, 23% off of sale. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And thanks to, uh, Crystal for these good photos and, <laughs> and photo room. I have to say, Tommy says, what was Vicky just saying about picking what peeps want? And Katie comes out with a ratty shirt. Hey, ratty shirts are, are cool, man. They're popular. It's true, Tommy. I don't know. There's it no has to be the, It has to be the right kind of... It's like, this is where a lot of this stuff, it's tough. It's like, how do you know that it's the right kind of ratty? I don't know what to tell you guys. I just had a feeling about that t-shirt. And, and to be honest, when I, was, when I was photographing it, I was kind of full of a little bit of regret. Like, I was like, should I even have picked this up? And then it literally sold in less than a week of me listing it. So, I'm telling you. All right. Next one. All right. So the reason I'm showing this particular one is because I bought, I had bought like a, a did like a whole bulk buy off of um, Derek, our friend Derek, and who's in Kentucky. I bought a whole bunch of stuff and the, I bought two of these grizzly bear t-shirts and I kind of paid up for them. And to be honest, I ended up, it's like, it's been a while. I've had them for quite a while now. I bought them sometime last year and, uh, and I made, I've definitely made money off of that bulk buy, but these t-shirts and a few other ones have just been sitting. And so um, somebody, I had two of them and a guy had made an offer. He said, Hey, if I give you 60 for each of them and buy both of them, would you take it? And so I said, yeah. And so he, uh, you know, sent me the offer I accepted. So I got $120 total for two of these shirts. 
And it was kind of one of those things of like, you know, I just want to get this out of here, bring some money in. And, you know, I barely broke even because I probably paid like 40 bucks a piece for them. So once you go, you know, fees and everything and the time I took to list them and stuff, I really didn't make any money. But it's also one of those things like, hey, recoup some money from the past and it gives me some capital moving forward. So you do what you got to do and you can't just hang on to stuff just because you paid up for it. So. I don't know what you're talking about. What? I hang on to stuff all the time. You do, but you're getting, but you're getting better at, at taking lower offers. Than I am you too. I am. And to me, I'm like, listen, I'm thinking like I've had these for like a year. It's time to just let them go. So uh, move on to something else. So Teresa asked why 23%. So I run a sale on my store every week. Sometimes it's 20%, sometimes it's 18%, sometimes it's 22, 23, and as high as 25%. The reason why it's different numbers is because I don't ever run the same sale two weeks in a row. Uh, and I, for whatever reason, maybe I just feel like it gets re-indexed better if you run a sale and then it ends and then you restart a sale. If you're doing it at the same price every time, I don't know that it makes that much of an impact. So because of the yes. fact that it has to change by a percentage or two uh, every week, I feel like it, I don't know. It's probably all in my head. I don't, it's probably all <laughs> in my head. I don't know. I'm everybody everybody has their groove of like what they think works for them. And whether it's true or it's just your habits, uh, it, what works for you works for you. And so if you're happy with it and go with it. But yeah, there's probably not any real reason for it. Um, nope. All right. Next up for you. Ooh. Another doll. This one I did take an offer on. This one I paid, <clears throat> I took an offer for $85 on. Uh, again, I paid about a dollar for this. This is only a 13 inch doll. Um, it's uh, German. It's probably not quite antique. This is actually closer to like 1930s, but uh, for purposes of selling, it, it does fit the purpose. Um, the body is much newer. The body was probably done in the 50s or, or late 40s, uh, but the head and the chest plate are the same size. And those are... Um, that is an antique from like the thirties or so. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Next up for me. All right. Uh, I wanted to show this because I swear, and I'm going to say this to Liz cause she's in the chat right now. Um, I always tease her whenever I sell anything that has anything to do with Colorado cause she lives in Colorado and she does not thrift. She's not a thrifter. She doesn't do vintage really. Um, Every once she might have a run out one or two bored. things, but she's not, she just doesn't really do that. And so I'm always teasing her because it's like she's got all this great stuff in, right in her backyard. And I get a lot of Colorado stuff because Jesse from Yesterday's Fits has a guy in Denver who shops the bins and ships it back to him. And I'm telling you, for some reason, I get a lot of uh, Colorado Avalanche sweatshirts. I don't really get the T-shirts as much. But Jesse always has the sweatshirts come in. And every time I list them just about, they sell within a week or two. And they always sell for like around 70 bucks. So I, I list them. Uh, so this one I wasn't listed for very long and, you know, I have it on sale. So it goes to $69.99. That was listed like a week. I listed, I listed it over on, uh, you know, Etsy for $69.99. And then if it ever goes to 10% off sale, it ends up being like 63 bucks. But I swear, I always sell the sweatshirts. And so this one sold for the price you see there, $69.99. I don't know what it is, but these sweatshirts sell and they sell fast every single freaking time. It's great. Yeah. See, Liz says, I swear one day. <laughs> One day she's actually going to uh, shop her thrift yeah. stores. I don't, I don't know. know. I always like getting hockey stuff. And I, I feel like the sweatshirts sell faster than the t-shirts when it comes to hockey. It could just be uh, random, but who knows? All right. Next up for you. Uh, this is just, this is one of those that, again, you can tell this is, before photo room. And it's also one of the harder to photograph items. So I'm not sure if I photographed this one or if Corey did, uh, but this is before, uh, I don't even know if this might've been, nope, I don't know if this is crystal or like not. Here. That doesn't look like crystal actually. That looks like our background. Anyway, um, I took an offer on this for $80. I had it for quite a while. I didn't pay much in the store for it. I'm, I wanna say somewhere around the 40 to, sorry, four to $6 range. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that's pretty hard to photograph because of what it is. It's a wraparound sarong skirt that actually has those big wide leg pants. It's definitely something you'd see someone wearing walking on the beach with a bikini top. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not a, um, or, or somebody in Coachella, going to Coachella could wear this now. Same thing. They'd be wearing a crochet bikini top or yeah. with braids and a big hat. Who knows? Uh, so anyway, uh, I did take an offer on it but it was still a really good sale. The fabric 
and the colors, it's really hard for it to even like show how bright that is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really pretty uh, batik fabric. Yeah, that's about it. All right. All right. Uh, this one, again, I was scrounging for stuff to show. This one isn't that exciting, but the reason I put it up is because I literally sold it within a day of listing it. This is something I've got from yesterday's fits. Um, I paid maybe 15 bucks top, maybe 10, either 10 or $15. And it's just kind of, a sort of like an all over print sort of, but it's like a Jersey, uh, kind of, um, shirt. And I listed it at a hundred. I had multiple people making offers right away. Uh, but then somebody offered 75 and I was like, you know what? I would take 75 because when I list something for, when it goes on sale for 97, 99, I, I send out offers like 85, 75, but eventually within a week or so I go down to 65. So I'm like, if somebody offered me 75 right away, I, I'm going to take it because it'd be silly not to. Um, so yeah, this is uh it's, it's designed kind of like a Jersey. It's on the Salem sportswear tag, which I really like the Salem sportswear stuff. They usually have good graphics and, and stuff, but uh, just a cool, Philadelphia Eagles shirt sold super fast, super, super fast. See, Dane is saying nobody's claiming those bad picks. It was probably me then is what you're saying, ladies. Probably. Maybe I took the picture probably. of that. Those, the skirt just trying to blame pants, everybody else. Let's whatever. just get it out there. Vicky takes terrible pictures. So. True. All right, let's go on. Why do you think I hire out? <laughs> Uh, so these I picked up from my big bulk buy from yesterday's fits. Uh, I did not, I don't buy a lot of the same thing Katie's. Katie does. So I looked for all the fun stuff that I would normally sell. I paid, I think, $10 or $15 for these. Uh, I did take an offer for $115. Um, I love when people send reasonable flipping offers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, $115. And I paid either $10 or $15 for these. And again, uh, wide leg jeans. Have you not seen skinny jeans are out people, right? So wide leg jeans as well as wide leg overalls have always been popular. The wide leg overalls are harder and harder to find because they don't have them in the stores. They're just starting to come back out with them mm -hmm. this year. But prior to that, you could only find overalls with like the tapered leg or the skinny leg, which geez, that ruins the whole point of wearing an overall. You want it to yeah, be man. a big, baggy, comfortable, I don't know. This looks like an invisible person is jumping in them and going, Wee! <laughs> <laughs> Totally 90s. Uh, yeah, I so wish that I had the bod to still wear overalls because I think they're fantastic. I'd be wearing them all the time. You can do whatever you want. Don't listen to anybody. All right. That's it. So, yeah, they're cool. All right. Next up is this Bob Seger t-shirt. Now, this is uh, another t-shirt from that big $2,000 haul I did from Barry. Um, which I long time ago, a long time ago, uh, hit the profit profit point. So this particular shirt, I took an offer for a hundred dollars. Now, if you remember my average cost for that whole stack of shirts, I got like 46, was it 36 or 46 t-shirts? Uh, my average cost was $55, but I certainly would not buy this t-shirt anywhere for $55, but it was part of a big lot of shirts and there were other ones that I knew would go for way, way more. Um, so for me taking a hundred dollars, uh, on this was great because it was all pure <coughs> profit. Whoa. you all right there. I am. Fine. Sorry. Quit looking at your phones. Are you laughing at stuff on your phones? That's what, see, you're, <laughs> how unprofessional. It, Jennifer, Jennifer Baum, I want you to know that that's you your knock fault. It off. You knock your it fault. off, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer's like, oh my God, banned. don't look at your phone <laughs> during the show. Yeah, you stop it. <clears throat> Take it away now. All right, and you're next. Uh, this is a really cool vintage uh, mod type of um coat it's from 1960s it's a curly like shearling which is a type of lamb a curly lamb coat uh you can see right there in that close-up photo what Poor it looks like lamb. uh this was dead stock this actually had uh zero signs of use completely dead stock it even had a tag somewhere in it um so it's really cool uh looking vintage coat it's been sitting for a while. This is one that I picked up as part of my uh, purchase from um, uh, the List Perfectly ladies from the clothing vault. And so I did take an offer on this for $120. Okay, okay. And I was happy to get rid of it because I have so many of these coats. I have a lot, a lot of fur mm -hmm. coats. That was a lot of the stock that I was able to get from them. So, yeah, it's a really cool looking coat. Uh, Greg wants to know who had 30 minutes, 30 minutes in the phone admonishing pool. It was 38 minutes. 38 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Shut up. Exactly. All right. Next up is this Grateful Dead t-shirt. Now, if you remember, this is, we haven't had this for very long. This is from that big haul from yesterday's Fitz when we went in and bought a ton of stuff. And uh, he had a bunch of um, his regular stuff, this higher price stuff. He was going 50% off for me. So I believe I paid like $50 for this one. Um, it's not one of the fancy um, tie-dye liquid blue t-shirts, but this is from a specific show. And Tobacco Road was like a smoke shop uh, in here in Vegas. And it says, I survived the Grateful Dead. And this is from a specific show. Yeah, it was that April 27th and 28th, 1991. Um, anyway, just a cool, cool shirt uh, that I grabbed. And I priced it up because, you know, there are people who, who collect this stuff. Uh, but somebody made an offer for 150. So speaking of reasonable offers, I have it priced at 200 and somebody offers to 150. I'm going to say, heck, yeah, give me your money now. But just a really cool, cool T-shirt from back in the day. It's a cool T-shirt. So Teresa wanted to know if I've listed the last batch of stuff that I picked up in Arizona the last trip. I have. I've listed all except maybe three or four of those items that I put aside that I need to photograph. Um, yeah, I have everything listed. Yeah. Um, Christine wants to know about getting a photo studio cube or tent. And when so anyone use oh, them. Oh, for jewelry. I think... Um, yeah, we don't we don't do anything small enough. No, I know I that, but, but I think uh, Liz has a smaller one that she's used before. Yeah, and yeah. I don't. Anyone wants to chime in on that? Yeah, yeah. All right. Next up for you. So I did show, show this, last, this week. last weekend, and I did mention that it sold right away before I even showed it. But I just wanted to, you could see better from photos what it looks like than when I was trying to show it on screen. This was from Katie's grandmother. She gave this uh, to me along with a bunch of other clothing. And this was one of the things that I listed it, and it sold within an hour, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure if that means that I priced it too low. But it's also one of those things that's very hard to price. It's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, it's already been received and I'm not so sure how much more I could have gotten out of it, but I'm very pleased with the price to $29.95. It's just the, the embroidery. This is all hand embroidered, vintage satin uh, dressing gown. It's just, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. It's one of the nicest things that I've probably sold in a very long time. Did you tell her that you sold it? Uh, I did not. I'm going to tell her in person when I see her. I see. I see. She just turned uh, two days ago, guys, on the 14th, she turned 94. So she, she will be very excited to hear about this sale. All right, here comes my big sale. I did not sell it for that much, but this Guns N' Roses t-shirt from 1989. Uh, I believe I paid 150 for it. I think I paid, yeah, I paid up for it. Um, I was really hoping to get at least 400 and I really didn't want to go below 400, but then somebody countered and said 350 and that was the best they could do. And I was like, you know what? 350 is stinking good. I'm not going to hold out for 400 for who knows how long. I've gotten lots of like low ball offers on this, lots of $300 offers on this, but 350 I was like, okay, I just need to turn this over and have some money coming in because, I mean, come on. So yeah. this was like my big sale of the week and my my um, average sale price was still only like 60 bucks because of how badly everything else was selling. But just a super awesome Guns N' Roses. I've only had this for a few weeks, I think. So uh, if I'm going to put out big capital for something, uh, better to sell it quick, make a little profit, and move on. So, but just I knew cool Jacob shirt. would like that one. Mm -hmm. It's a great shirt. This is probably my favorite shirt that you've gotten in a while. Yeah. I mean, it's got some pretty inappropriate stuff. I don't know if I could even sell it on the eBay anymore, guys. Well, no, I think it's okay. The nips are covered up. But yeah, it's that's pretty all suggestive. It's pretty suggestive. Anyway, all right, next one for you. Uh, this was also a yesterday's fits. A yesterday's fits. Sorry, a um, clothing vault pickup from back in October uh, when I when I purchased uh, bought out the remainder of their inventory. So this is this one sold. I did take an offer on this for one ninety. Uh, so it sold for one ninety. This is a nineteen seventies beat up leather racer jacket it's definitely beat up it's definitely got you know scrapes and scratches and all the things that you see there uh brooks is a really good well-made uh leather brand so it does hang on to its value and re really a vintage jacket like this you want it to have some personality i think it it's much cooler that it has personality than that it um than if it were like brand new and 
you can't even fold it and can't move in it. Like there's nothing, nothing says weekend warrior motorcycle rider than somebody who's wearing a $500 jacket that they can't even bend. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I really like that. It's worn and broken in. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. It's pretty cool. All right. Next up. Now I had three wholesales on Etsy. Um, I'm going to show you two of them. That's uh, a very, this, cool, that's a very cool sweatshirt. So this sweatshirt, like, okay. I feel like this is the kind of stuff that gets overlooked a lot and you know, it maybe doesn't sell super fast. I've had this for not too long, maybe a couple of months. And I think I only paid like five bucks for it. It's an eighties sweatshirt. It says, uh, it say beach wear on it. it's Lake Powell beach wear. Um, very exciting. Glen I Canyon. love I don't know Lake Powell. Where the, heck is, where the heck is that anyway? Lake Powell is, is that Utah. Utah. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, it's just, it's just a sweatshirt and I paid $5 for it and let's see how much I sold it for. Biggie likes when I sing a song, when I go look at my sale price on the Etsy. No, I really don't. Jesus. Yeah, you Why do. did you just suddenly turn it into a, a country <laughs> twang song? Anyway, it was on sale 10% off. So I actually sold it for $62.99. So $63 paid like five bucks for it. 63 bucks but i feel like this is the kind of thing that a lot of people would kind of totally overlook. saved on the bell vibes oh like yeah Jacob for says. Sure. this is something that i think if i don't think deb is watching this week deb who had surgery last week i hope she's feeling better uh but this is something that deb bradley would totally wear because oh she's, yeah for sure she's definitely into the same for by the bell, sure bell vibes. uh but anyway i think this is something that would get overlooked but guys guys 90s is super in right now but so is so are the 80s there's a lot of 80s stuff that's like coming back too who was just saying that they were at um what store were they at anthropology or some yeah store and it had and they had like total like puffy paint glittery yep doodads on shirts that were all like uh, anthropology has the big oversized pastel colors yeah and yeah, it's 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 just awful. ridiculous, ridiculous. <laughs> but I think this. But we're gonna sell awesome. the real authentic. I think stuff. this. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Well, and luckily, I do feel like there are a lot of collectors out there. It's like they want the authentic stuff. So, yeah, they they can, might be able to get new versions of it now. But come on, let's let's go. I think school. if you go and look at like Depop specifically, because Depop does a lot of stylized content. Um, and again, I'm not a big seller on there, but I do have so much inventory that would work on there. A lot of the people that do stylized uh, collections on there that actually model the clothing put together some of the most ridiculous outfits. I honestly, I could never pull it off. But if I were my daughter's size and I was 22 years old, I'd be rocking that shit. So like yeah. they just have some crazy outfits where they're putting together like entirely different decades and somehow making it work. Yeah. So I, I think, think it's cool. cool. I think it's cool. All right. Next up for you, what you got here? So this is one that I actually picked up. I picked up this skirt. I paid $6 for this skirt. I picked it up at Deseret Industries and I was absolutely shocked that it was this skirt. Uh, as you can see by the, um, the stock photo that I stole just to show. Um, I actually have had this for about five or six months. I had a lot of early interest on it and it did not sell. This skirt, by the way, is like almost $5,000 retail. That's um, crazy. This yeah. was absolutely maybe worn once, if worn at all. It had no tags on it, but it was so crispy that you could tell that it hadn't been worn. I don't know who the hell's buying this shit and donating it, honestly. But uh, this particular skirt was very expensive. And I've had several lowball offers to the point where just last week, someone was berating me on... on Macari because I wouldn't go any lower and they were like you're never going to sell it for that I just saw three of them that sold for 195 and that I said well you deal. I said well that person got a really good deal because that seller underpriced their product and then they were like you don't even know what you're doing so of course I blocked them screw you this is one of those people I wish I hadn't blocked because I wanted to go back and go no nah. nah, 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 nah. they probably go back and look and then they can be sad and cry alone how so much did it sell for? It sold for three hundred and fifty dollars. What? I did take an offer. Three hundred and fifty dollars. What? <laughs> You're silly. That's crazy. Three hundred and fifty dollars. That's just nuts. All right. Next up for me, and that one did sell for a couple of. Uh, it sold uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so no, this, oh, I can answer yes. Jacob's question. Sorry, Jacob. I paid six dollars for it. I picked it up at Deseret Industries yeah. thrift mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so this one I've got a little story for you. Not really a story, but anyway, University of Southern California. So USC, but it's law. So this is the law school. I, you know, I already pick up, uh, I already pick up like school sweatshirts and t-shirts and stuff like that, especially if they have good graphics, but when it's a particular school, like a particular, uh, major, um, I especially want to pick it up, especially for something like this. Cause you never know. There's some guy out there. Maybe he went there or maybe he wants to tell the girls on, uh, on Tinder on, on, you know, he wants to go on Tinder and he wants to be like, Hey, I'm a lawyer. I went to school. I went to, uh, Does anybody use Tinder anymore? <laughs> I don't think anybody uses Tinder anymore. I think they probably do anyway. Um, so I want to help somebody create a big lie about how they're a high price lawyer. Um, and I wanted to buy the sweatshirt so they can do that. Or maybe they actually went, I don't know who knows. So I paid like maybe $15 for this again, yesterday's fits. And it's funny because I got so many lowball offers and so many people wanting to wanting to sub, buy this from me. I had somebody recently uh, on, I think it was on Mercari, um, so many things like, hey, I'm in California. And then I was like, okay. And then their next message was, why price so high? And so my response was, because that's what I priced it at. I mean, like, I have no answer for that, dude. And uh and then somebody like messaged me on eBay and they were like, Hey, what's your IG? And then the same person messaged me on Etsy and they're like, Hey, I'll give you $75 for this. And so I just didn't respond to them because they were annoying me and <laughs> pretty much. And then I was going to respond to him maybe a couple days later. And then while I was waiting to respond to him, I went ahead and sold it. Yo. And I sent him a message and said, sorry, it already sold bruh. And I sold it for the full price. wasn't even on sale for ninety nine ninety nine. So I sold for a hundred dollars. It already sold, bruh. Yeah, bruh. It already sold. So maybe, but seriously, okay, come on. Listen, my name on eBay is a boutique for him. My name on Etsy is a boutique for him. You found me on both places. Why can't you find my Instagram, dude? How hard is it? My name is the same everywhere. They drive me crazy. These. Platforms have rules against taking sales off platform. I'm not going to play with you over a freaking sweatshirt and lose my account. Use your brain, bro. Clearly, he is not somebody who went to this law school. Clearly, he's somebody who's going to perpetuate the big lie that he did go to this law school <laughs> because he's a freaking moron who can't figure out shit. And somebody else swooped in and bought that sweatshirt out from under him. Jeez cheese okay. or he's like the cheapest worst lawyer ever who probably has like a huge billboard that says I like better know. call Saul did you like in the back yeah. of the nail salon did you break your leg I'll help you out please don't dude anyway oh Danica says my cousin is 42 met her new husband on tinder that's why we had to go to Vegas last year oh well there hey go. okay there you go. anyway anytime it's like so law school uh, med medical school, like all that kind of stuff. Those are perfect kinds of sweatshirts for you to buy and price up, price up, yo. All right. Jacob says you snooze, you lose cap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no cap, no cap, no cap. All no right, cap. go ahead. Uh, so this was something I also picked up for the yesterday's fits. I do believe I paid $20 for this. I did pay up a little bit. I don't pay $20 for nothing. Ooh. But I was trying to help the boys out and I did pay up a little bit. So this was a 90s cinchilla, uh, not quite as hot as they used to be. They used to sell much more, but they've started uh, reprinting and remaking this style. So uh, the Patagonia lovers don't care quite as much whether it's uh, true vintage or if it's current right now. So uh, anyway, we I listed it. Uh, maybe it's been listed about two or three weeks now and it's sold on Etsy instead of eBay. Zero interest on eBay. What's up with that? $129.95. Nice. Free shipping. Nice. Yeah, that's a cute and one. And I just grabbed you another Patagonia Cinchilla you from did. yesterday's fits for five dollars. You did, but it's and not that it. tape. That's no. not that snap tea. I know. Uh, I that's the best you. one, the snap tea. But whatever um, reminds Yahoo. This is really cool. So, and I like that it had the different colors on it. It had like purple and blue and 
anyway, gray and all those colors. The problem is that it was a uh, a small. If yeah. it had been a little bit bigger, it would have sold, I think, faster. Yeah, so for sure, for sure, you. All right. Uh, now I've got one. I mean, come on, guys. If got, you like cows, I got a thing for cows. Okay, I always sell my cow stuff. I mean, come on. You saw the the uh, the Texas t shirt I sold earlier. If you like cows, and I actually got this from Leah. Uh, a.k.a. Cherry Darling, a.k.a. Gracie's Vintage, uh, who apparently is trying to find her TikTok love. Um, she's been she's been going crazy on the old TikTok. And, uh, but I bought this sweatshirt from her at Gracie's Vintage. Uh, got some good deals. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was on like one of the clearance racks or, or something. She knew I was going to grab this one. So I probably paid like $10, maybe $15 for it. I don't remember. Um but I am, it's true. I'm a sucker for anything cow related just because I think they're funny. I think they're silly. Um, and apparently they sell every time. So somebody Cadillac made, cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cadillac. <laughs> anyway, I sold it for $65 and it is awesome. And thank you, Leah, for uh, allowing. And I, and I have another cow sweatshirt that I got from Leah too. The last time we went in there that has not been listed yet. So I'm looking forward to that one selling real quick. Although it's super, 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 super tiny, but I still love it. I still love it. I really do. Utterly ridiculous. Liz it says. is utterly ridiculous. Yeah. So true. So true. Don't be talking about um, udders. Liz. It's not, eBay doesn't approve of it. Leave cows, <laughs> cows nips it out of it. Um, okay. Next up for you. Uh, this is yet another uh, item from my um, clothing vault haul from back in October. So this has been listed since the end of October. Just a starter's jacket. Uh, the Panthers, um, it's from a, a club in New Bedford, Massachusetts. So if Kelly's in there, New Bedford. Uh, so it's right near Fall Reeve, Fall River. Um, and... Uh, it's, you know, very much a local type of thing. Um, I did have someone contact me right after I had posted it about it because her father used to play on this team. I don't know. I shouldn't buy it, but she did not. Uh, it sold to somebody in, I want to say like Georgia. It just sold like yesterday. So it's going somewhere. I think it's going somewhere in Georgia. In Georgia. <laughs> there you go. One twenty nine ninety five. Free shipping. Uh, it's just a random local team. I don't know why someone in Georgia bought it. Maybe they were on the team and they no longer live in New Beige. I don't know. I don't Who know. knows? Who knows? New, sorry, that was a localism. Uh, New Beige. People call it New Bedford. The New Panthers. Beige. All right, my last one, not very exciting, but I figured I'd show, you know, Grailed, I had like six sales on, on Grailed, and uh, they were all pretty just average mediocre, but this is like the best one I had out of all of them. And it's just a Michigan sweatshirt, but it was dead stock, um, 90s, uh, just embroidered across the, the chest there. You didn't have this very long I didn't have No, I didn't have it very long. And I think, again, I think I only paid like maybe 15 bucks for it at yesterday's fits, but uh, flipped it real quick for 75 Doesn't matter. We're going into the summer here. People are still buying sweatshirts. Um, so, and I get good deals on them because, yeah, Jesse's not selling sweatshirts in the store because it's like a bazillion degrees here now, so. Anyway, that's all. Nothing that's very all. exciting. That's all. That's I, just all. Had, I just was trying to get my 11 items since apparently you were going back more than a week. I did. I went back a couple weeks because <sighs> we didn't show anything for a while. So we had extra stuff <sighs> and I had a shit week. So I didn't have a lot to show from this week. Yeah, that's a lot of cursing. A lot of cursing you're doing here right now. I don't want to talk like this. Anyway. All right. Do you want to show some stuffs? Sure. What think? Sure. What do you got? What do you got? I got some stuffs. Yeah. So I'll start with some hard goods. I've got some hard goods. This actually, some of this stuff came from our trip to Atlanta, which was shipped back in a pallet we just got this uh, last week. that we just got in on Tuesday. So I ha I'm sorting through uh, all of the hard goods. All of the clothing has been cleaned and has already been shipped off to Crystal to photograph. So I will show some of that on our yeah. next haul. Um, and I am going to be editing the video that we took and I'll put it up sometime this week. Go ahead and feel free to bug her. Eh, let me alone. Because I do, I and I'm a to, nag. My sales are bad. I'm trying to get some listed. Come on. Go ahead. Uh, so, it, you know, we paid by the pound. We paid, uh, you know, about a dollar a pound for everything that we purchased, and then we shipped everything home. So everything is about a couple bucks. Um, uh, this is a vintage 
Benjamin Franklin, I'm trying to get this glaring on there, Benjamin Franklin, Franklin toy cash register. Uh, it is missing. There's a little plastic front that goes over here that, and, and, and the top, but it's still, I paid, you know, a couple bucks for it. It works. Ooh, uh, if it were totally intact, it would probably sell for like 125, but as it is, I'll still sell it for probably about 75. Cool. Um, it's not a super large one, but the bell still works and the drawer still works. It's just missing like a clear plexiglass thing that goes on the top. Now, I also picked up this. Uh, this is a vintage Budweiser. This is a cash register topper. That's what this is. Advertising topper. No. It could fit on top of that one, but that's not a real cash register. So, so I'm not selling them together or anything. Uh, but yeah, to give you an example of how it goes, it would go on top of the cash register. They can't see what's like, I know, I know. I'm going to pick it up in a second. It would go on top of a big cash register like that. So it's like a, a vintage cash register topper. Does it, light this, up? it does light up. There is a light. Um, Have you tested it yet? I did test it. It works. There's no plug right well, here. Well, oh, Katie's going to plug it in now. There is a plug here. Uh, so the comps on the Budweiser thing, I think it's not too high. Uh, you know, Greg, I think when I looked it up briefly, they're selling somewhere around $65 or so. Um, it works. I just need to, I don't know what I need to do, but it was working downstairs. Uh, are you saying, are you trying to say I broke it? You probably did already. Big jerk. Sorry. Well, it was lit up downstairs when I took the photos of it. Let's see. Maybe it needs a new bulb. I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's cute. It's a little Budweiser with the Clydesdales in the wagon. Uh, it lights up on the inside. It just has to have a bulb inside. So it may actually be that I lit it up and it worked for five seconds and now it needs the bulb. Yeah. Um, so there's those two things. So one thing that I hardly ever pick up are ties, right? Men's ties. We know that they, they sell, uh, but there are certain size ties that sell more than others. Um, obviously, anybody knows that, uh, most people know, I think, that the Donald Trump ties sell very well. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're not having a political debate here, guys. But that brand of tie sells very well. So you can mm -hmm. get around 50 to $75 for any Donald Trump ties that you find. Uh, and that was before he was even elected. Uh, so I did find one uh, Burberry. This is a, this is actual a genuine Burberry tie in, in Atlanta. Um, I'll probably sell this for about 75 bucks. I don't normally pick up men's ties because usually they sit. They sit for a long time and they don't sell very quickly. But there were quite a few ties and because they're very uh, light, I, I didn't I didn't mind picking these up and they were very they were cheap. So uh, the other one that I picked up is Ferragamo, Salvador Ferragamo. Italian silk tie. About the same. That one should go for about $75 as well. Fancy, fancy. Uh, let's see. I've got a bunch of the Brooks Brothers ties. Uh, and again, they're just like basic. So this is the cheaper line of Brooks Brothers, three, four, six. Um, and then I have some of the standard Brooks Brothers branded ties right here. I have three of those. I may lock them up together. Um, because I have three all together and this is the third one again I paid like since I was paying a dollar a pound let's just say I paid a dollar maybe for all three um, and these I may lot together if I lot them together the chances of them selling are probably better and I'll probably sell them for like around $75 for all three instead of trying to wait and sell them one at a time I'll do a, a bulk little bargain deal mm -hmm. um this brand, I'm not sure what this is. I need to steam this one. It's wrinkly. And it's got these really cute pelicans on it. I think they're pelicans. Yeah, pelicans and fish. So if anybody knows what this brand is, I, it might be Hermes, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So let me just try to... There's no name on it. Uh, it just has the logo. I'm trying to... It's definitely, there we go. It's definitely a, a genuine silk. It was all the, with these other ties. I think that might be Hermes. I'm not 100% sure if anybody knows before I've done any research. Um, and again, when I'm showing things like this, I haven't researched anything yet. Um, but it might be Hermes. If it is, it's going to be worth more. 
Long John Silver restaurant manager tie. It could be. And then the last tie is just this really cool vintage uh, wool tie. Sorry, that's just a fuzzy, not a stain. Mm -hmm. It's just a wool plaid. It's kind of a tartan plaid, and it's an Irish wool. Very nice. Very so nice. Um, I don't know what that one's going to sell for, but maybe like 30 bucks or something like that. Let's see. What else do I have to show? I picked this up at the bins. Let me uh. Hey. Oh. I picked this up at the bins. I paid $6.99 for it, not by the pound. Uh, they, they give separate prices on things that are uh, heavy and stupid. Uh, so this was $6.99. It's new in the box. It is dented, but it's new. And the dent on the outside of the box does not affect the functionality. This should sell for close to $100 as it is. It's a dual burner, and that's why it sells for as much. It's just a Coleman. Um, stove camping stove so um yeah that should sell for close to a hundred dollars and that pretty much pays for my entire bins trip nice yeah, you um, got like 70 pounds of stuff mm -hmm. you just need to go more often yeah i do um and, and I you think, always find good stuff there i think that's all i'm going to show you right now and then katie can show you some more stuff yeah well first of all uh so we're heading to um oregon this next week and when i was there a couple of weeks ago I had brought some t-shirts for my 16 year old. You get off your phone, get off your, pretend to be interested in me. Ah, you're so rude. Uh, look in the chat. Anyway, my 16 year old nephew, he had just turned 16. So I brought him some t-shirts and uh, throughout the weekend, as he discovered more and more about me, he suddenly realized I'm super cool. And he told me I am his, am his favorite person. And I need to keep that going because now it's like a drug for me. I need some validation of a 60 year old. Uh, and so I did grab him a couple more t-shirts. And so I just want to show them because I think they're pretty cool. Um, this one is, and plus, you know, I really want to like annoy any adults that see him wearing inappropriate shirts. So this is uh, the band Repulsion. This is a like a reprint of a, of a t-shirt from like, um, this album's from the 80s, uh, their Horrified album. And on the back of it, it says, it was a pain, gore, death, uh, the whole nine yards. And it's just a pretty cool graphic. And this is the kind of stuff that he likes. So, and he's scrawny, but he likes big sizes because guess what? Baggy, big and baggy is in again. Um, for just the, like it for was the in the nineties. Yep. He totally dresses like I did at that age. So, um, so I got him this and then the other one I got him is this is like a no name i mean i'm assuming this is a streetwear brand that was around briefly and then uh folded because this is not vintage the tag says known unknowns which um i know in like hip-hop i think there's a couple of hip-hop albums that have that title but this is like a clothing brand and it says made the usa it's it's not you're not focusing whatever Anyway, but this is not a brand that's around anymore, and I can't find any trace of it. But he's a skateboarder. It's a really cool all-over print. Uh, nice big size. So this just looks like something that he'll think is cool. And I got it for super cheap, so I was like, what the heck? I think paid five bucks for it. So that's what he gets. That's what you get. That's what he gets. So I think they'll, I think I'll do well. You're going to score some points. I, gotta, I gotta again, give it to him on the download. You were just home three weeks ago and now you're going to go home and spoil him again. Yeah, whatever. I, they were super cheap. So it's like, why not? Anyway, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, back in my day, uh, I mean, who in the streetwear world didn't think that Lear gear, uh, was the coolest. Don't you just love Lear gear? It's just like a Learjet sweatshirt, but seriously, it's like they did it like in the style of like LA gear, LA gear and just like cool streetwear at the time. I think it's pretty funny because it's, I mean, it's a freaking jet sweatshirt, but anyway, this is made in the USA faster by design, Lear gear, Learjet. Uh, I love it. That's a ridiculous logo. I know. Downtown Julie, F and Julie Brown. F and Julie Brown. This is from, uh, it says 1989 on it. And uh, I said this before. Now, this isn't always going to be a hard, fast rule. But when you see 
the um, number on there, the 4244, instead of just the large in this jersey's tag. A lot of times it can be from the 80s. Now, sometimes stuff gets printed on older, older shirts anyway, so it's not like it's always a hard, fast rule. But it actually does say 1989 on it. So Joanne says she is her granddaughter's, three-year-old granddaughter's best friend. So it's it's the same. It's the same as you being cool to your nephew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it really mm -hmm. is. He knew I was a little bit cool when he found my Instagram last year and, and saw some of the stuff that I have. But then he found out that I used to write a skateboard and that I like horror movies. And so he definitely thought I was cool. And he was. And she's told this story no less than 10 times in the last three weeks. So it must make her feel pretty good. It does make me feel pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, next up is this awesome sweatshirt. It's in fantastic condition. Uh, so Raiders, very, very popular team, of course. Uh, but it's got the Flintstones on it. And this thing is like... That one's cool. It's in such good condition. And it's really soft, too. Whoever gets this is going to love it. Uh, really soft. Um, it's on a league leader tag, which I don't know what that is. But this, this uh, sweatshirt is from the 90s. Um, great, uh, great graphic in great condition, great team. The Raiders, the Raiders. And what's nice about it is it doesn't even say on it, which Raiders team it is, which this right. would have been probably Oakland. LA or LA. It would have been LA. LA. Um, but LA Raiders, but it doesn't really matter if you were a fan when they were in Oakland or now that they're in Las Vegas, it just says the Raiders guys. And this one, I'll probably, I haven't listed it yet, but I'll probably sell it for like a hundred. Fruity it's Pebbles hype. Jacob says, <laughs> oh, Jacob, you make me laugh. All right, I show you. Some of you guys, I think, will really appreciate. Uh, I got a couple of sweatshirts here, but this is one of the ones I got from Gracie's Vintage. It's super tiny, but it is awesome. Look at this. This is like a, I think it's from the 80s. Yeah, it says 1987 on it. So food teas are snack teas. Snack teas are, I always say it wrong. Damn it. I always think I'm going to sound cool, but I'm not cool. No, you're not cool. Snack, snack teas are super hot. So this is like a snack crew neck yeah sweatshirt look at this guys yeah it's they got call the little, them crew necks some sometimes they do um this is the lifesavers it's got the little candy up there and then it's got the little lifesavers all over it but seriously this thing is so awesome i, I like it. that one i would have worn that back in the day it's super tiny i mean this is going to be probably well i was super tiny i would have been some streetwear girl is going to totally snatch this up but it's it's awesome I she's going to snatch the snack tea the yeah. snack crew this is super tiny though. I don't think I I don't think I paid a whole lot for it. I don't remember what um Leah charged me for it, but I don't think I paid more than like 10 bucks for it. But I'm not really sure. I might have paid like 15. Um, it's cute. Because it's so so little, so little and tiny. Uh next up, I got this. Uh so I might have worn that lifesavers tee with a polo shirt with a popped collar underneath it. Ooh. Oh, pop it up with pop one of the up. colors of the lifesavers. That's pretty yeah. much how I would have worn that. Pop it up. All right. Next up, I have uh, this is the band Requiem. Not the same band. I have a different Requiem t shirt. There were a couple of different bands called Requiem. Um, this one, uh, this album, they're not a Christian band, but the album is uh, Christ Has Risen. I don't believe they're a Christian band. They could um, be. They're, just, they're like a, a heavy metal band. Um, anyway, this is from the late 90s, long sleeve. Uh, that's got little Jesus there on the on the cross, and uh, this is on a Toltex tag. I'll probably price this one up because it's a nice long sleeve with a record label down the one sleeve. I think the other side says Christ is risen, but um, I will price this probably like at least a hundred. It's in really good condition. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it. I don't think I paid a lot for it. Maybe twenty bucks. All right, another T-shirt from uh, Gracie's Vintage. Guys, guys, I don't know where she went. I think we lost her. She's not, I don't see her in the chat. But guys, seriously. I love this one too. Muppets Movie. This is a legit 1978 Muppets Movie T-shirt, guys. You can see down the little copyright there. Muppets Movie T-shirt. Come on, who didn't love the Muppets movie? One of the first movies I saw at a movie theater. Not that one, the next yeah. one. Whatever, the great Muppet. It's keeper. on the Roach tag from the 70s. Uh, this is super tiny, but it's awesome. I love it. I don't and think fin. it's super tiny. It's pretty small. I, it's it's small. definitely a girl could wear this. A small or a medium girl. Yeah, it's like a men's small size. Um, but it's super cute. It's in fantastic condition. Uh, the colors I are great on it. I have a frog here. 
Hello, T Frog here. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Like that? It's bad. <laughs> Mine wasn't that bad. <laughs> anyway, I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, this one, again, I don't remember. I don't think I paid more than 20 bucks for it. Um, she fleeced me out of 70 bucks on that other t-shirt. So I think she was having mercy on me with the Muppets t-shirt. <laughs> uh, I love it. That my, my, uh, what are you going to list it for? This one? Oh, I mean, I, I have to look it up because I don't know. I could go look it up and find out there's a hundred of them on there already. So, but I'll put it up for a hundred bucks at least. I hope at not. least. It's really cute. It's super cute. Super cute. Next up. Next up is this amazing cat t-shirt. Guys, have you heard about Madonna's cat? That's ridiculous. <laughs> I actually told uh, I told Dana that she needs to recreate this T-shirt with her cat, Eddie Van Halen, who is an orange who tabby is a, cat. A what? He's a what? He's an orange tabby cat. No, you did not say an orange. You said an orange. I'm sorry. You said, <laughs> you said orange, and then I said what? You said you orange. I'm like no, you it came out wrong. Like you tried to like you tried to say that, say it like that's how you said it the first time, and I'm like, no, you did not. You said orange. Listen, sometimes the Rhode Island comes out in me. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is um, from 1991. Callahan. I think that's the guy. Isn't that the guy who's like the paraplegic artist? I think it is. Um, anyway. Awesome I agree with that, Gail. I think it is a, a joke on uh, Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys are, are going a little deep. I don't think that anyone's thinking about Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's cat on this one. But um, I think it's funny. It is pretty funny. Anyway, Vicky had gotten Eddie Van Halen some little party hats uh, for his birthday coming up. And his birthday's not coming up for a while. Whenever. He's a new kitten. But for when it does come up. So she's got the cones and she's got the orange cat. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And I'll show one more before. So speaking of snack teas. I like guys, this one a lot too. Guys. Guys, this one is from the 80s. Where are we walking to later? I think we're going to have to walk there. Walk to Dairy Queen? Yeah, why not? That's a long walk. It's pretty far away. Anyway, this is an awesome ringer tee from the 80s. Uh, it is on a Screen Stars tag. Check that out. And it's beautiful. I love it. And it's got all the candy bars on it. Uh, it's got the Butterfinger. It's got the Snickers. It's got the m &Ms. It's got the, what's that one? It's got the Heath Bar. It's got the Whoppers. Come on. Pretty dope. I priced this baby up. I priced this one at like 100. <laughs> Jacob, who didn't I want to pay like 15 Who didn't want to pet Madonna's kitty in the 80s? We will, we will. All right. Madonna go. these days. Eek. Oof. Eek. Yeah, Allison says that her 17 year old nephew, who is no longer with us, um, thought she was pretty cool back in the day. And so I'm supposed to spoil him rotten here. Okay. Here's the thing about my nephew, Sam, he'll never watch this. He doesn't watch my stuff. Uh, my sister's other kids were all super easy to crack. They were basically like, you give them attention. They automatically think you're awesome. You come around and hang out with them. They think you're the coolest thing ever. Sam has always, since he was an infant, just been kind of like, he's doing his own thing, man. Like I, I could walk in the door after not seeing him for a couple, like a year and he'd just be like, hey, auntie, and then just like keep on walking because he's got stuff to do, okay? So he's always been just like doing his own thing. And so actually having like a little bit of his attention and him wanting to like talk to me and hang out with me and like we watched a movie one night and it was like fun. It was cool. Okay. I so got, it's nice. I got it. It's, it's, I want to be his cool aunt, man. So I'm going to work for it a little harder. Might you're, have to... you're his only aunt. <laughs> he has other aunts. Oh, on his father's side? Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Uh, okay, so this is something I picked up. The next few things are things that I picked up in Atlanta. I'm going to do some clothing. Nothing blow your mind crazy. I just wanted to show this really cute um, uh, vintage, probably 80s, early 90s uh, jumpsuit. Cotton jumpsuit. I would say 90s, actually. Cute. Uh, cotton jumpsuit. It's super cute pattern. Uh, I haven't listed it as of yet. Uh, it's just 
I loved it. I, again, paid, you know, less than a dollar for it. It's lightweight cotton. It's just something that would definitely sell like right now. Um, I just love the pattern. Love that it's got some wider leg on it. Um, I also found a couple of jackets. I've got a vintage uh, members only. We all know the members only cafe racer jackets. I don't generally find them this large. This one is a double X and it's black. This is the, the rainbow logo is the best and the most desirable logo, but this one is like- It's probably like 90s. Yeah, this is like 90s. 90s, late 90s on this one. Thank you for saying what I was gonna say anyway. But yeah, uh, another one, it's in great condition, nothing wrong with it, very lightweight, paid about a buck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, here's another one. This is a vintage Arnold Palmer, uh, kind of like a windbreaker bomber jacket or Harrington jacket, however you want to talk about it. But this one actually has a the ribbed collar on it and not the, it's not a collar collar. Uh, so this one is also in great shape. This is one that I'll probably, it's like a buttery yellow. It's not photographing well or not showing well on the, on the video, but buttery yellow, another big size probably came from the same donor. Um, and I'll, I'll probably sell that for like 55, 65 bucks. The, um, members only jacket, maybe 45, 55. That's not, they're not super popular anymore. Um, let's see. I just, I'm not getting as much for them as I used to. So. What else do we have here? I did pick up a couple of um, Athleta. Athleta is just a division of like Lululemon owned by the same owner, so Athleta. Um, racer back workout tanks, they're the same size. They're in great shape. These I will stick together in a lot and they may not be worth you know, selling it by themselves necessarily for the $25 range. I mean, I know that's that's a good price for some people, but if I put these together, I can probably get 40 to 50 and flip them a lot faster because they're the same size, same style, just different different uh, colors. Um, let's see here. Why are you getting them to me? To get it off my lap. <laughs> uh, let's see, here's another American Girl doll. This was picked up in Georgia. Uh, she's got a wonky eye. Does anybody know which doll this one is? She has a darker complexion. She does look like she's probably um, an Hispanic or a Latina doll, but I'm not sure who she is. I know I'm gonna look this up, but she's got her little buck teeth and um, she's cute. She has a long braid. Now, honestly, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. She could be one of those uh, dolls, the custom dolls that are made to look like someone too. So um, I may not figure that part out, but she is pleasant company. And um, I just want to know she's what rude bastard zip tied her neck. I know, right? That's she was probably hanging on something in, a, mm. in the store. Uh, but yeah, she's got a zip tie on her neck. She's got a cute little bathing suit on. Anyway, she's in good shape. Her hair's in good shape. It's not all ratty. She just has that one a little bit wonky eye that when, you know, mm -hmm. she lays down, Who it, doesn't, doesn't, guys? it doesn't close. Who doesn't? <laughs> uh, but she was cute. So I paid, you know, a buck or two. Um, let's see. What else did I get? Oh, this was one of my fun finds. Um, you might see a little bit about this on uh, when we actually do the video from our trip to Atlanta. But I found a whole bunch of vintage Western bolo ties. And I'm just going to show a couple of them, but um, I do have to look up some of the marks on them. I think a bunch of them could be sterling. This is actually pretty heavy. It feels like it's sterling and real turquoise. Um, and it's just got the, you know, they're definitely the Southwestern vibe uh, with the you know, the eagle and the embroidery on it, or not embroidery, but the cutout, the mm -hmm. flowers. Anyway, red turquoise, blue turquoise. And then this one is like a copper looking bolo tie. They all have these weird, you know, the leather braided things. This one is kind of a cloisonne inlay of an eagle. They must have all come from the same collector. Grandpa died. They donated his... um his bolo ties, another like little Western one. It's like a pressed 3D, uh, like buck and bronco. They're hard to show, sorry, I'm trying to get it mm -hmm. not 
to reflect back. Um, a resin scorpion. That's Ooh. gross. That's gross. Uh, this one's kind of like a cocapelli. A little cloisonne cocapelli. Or it might be like an Indian, actually. I think that's like an Indian dancing, doing like a powwow dance. Um, yeah, so I've got a... I've got a, quite a bit of research to do, but I've, I think I have 20 or so here. Um, and I think some of them are sterling. I, again, I didn't pay much for them. I don't know what they are worth anymore. I haven't even done any looking up, but I'm thinking a minimum of $30, $40 a piece on these. And then the ones that are sterling obviously would be much more. Um, or if I can find anything that's artist signed. Um, like this one is like... A, I don't know if that's some kind of bug or something, but it's it's really pretty. That's also mm -hmm. turquoise. And again, it looks to be real. I think they're real, but they're not all stamped. So interesting. I'm going to have to do a little bit of uh, research on that, see what I come up with. This is another turquoise. This is a flat turquoise, like cloisonne. It's really pretty. So yeah, they're just really, I thought they were pretty cool. Um, not something I would normally pick up, but also not something I would normally find, you know? Yeah, see, Jacob, same thing. It's kind of like a, um, like belt buckles. I did get a bunch of those too. So, uh, and yeah, then, you appreciate them without yeah. whoever wearing them. Yeah, and and there are a lot of people that still wear that type of thing too. So, and now it's actually kind of like a, a retro, you know, mm -hmm. hipster type thing. So, uh, lastly, I'm just going to show a couple of handbags that I picked up in Atlanta. Uh, this one is just a vintage, great '80s vintage, like envelope clutch with the patchwork leather, uh, suede inside. It's actually in like brand new condition. Um, again, I paid pennies for these things. I'll probably sell this for like 40, 50 bucks. This one is an artisan made um, like backpack style. Uh, not, not backpack, sorry, but like a, like a satchel or some, some sort. Um, this has definitely some kind of reptile type scaly leather. Um, this is made in Spain or Portugal, something like that. Uh, another one, 50, 60 bucks. And then this one is one of my favorite ones. This is just a vintage like 70s hand tooled stamped leather, very, very hip hippie, you know, funky leather hand tooled with like the sunflowers on it. I love this one. This one I might do for like 50 or $60. And then last, my last thing to show you is I picked up, I grabbed this at the bins. It was filthy. It was so gross. Uh, but I threw it right in the washing machine and it came out in perfect condition. Vintage Eddie Bauer 1980s backpack. It's kind of just like the, um, it's a hiking backpack, so it's the kind that has all the different straps that wrap around you. But it's not, uh, it doesn't have the aluminum frame. So you can see the old vintage 1980s Eddie Bauer tag on it. They don't make this type of, it's like old Jansport. Um, it sells really well. So I think I'll probably sell that for like 75. And I picked it up at the bins, so I paid about a dollar. Allison did some research Allison. <laughs> she almost wrote it down. I almost wrote it down. She was seriously I like, the she said, and then she realized that you that it was you, was and you're nasty. a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's it. Stuff. That's it. Of course, Jesse. He knows what's up, and he had this T-shirt waiting for me. Uh, Fear No Mountain, Aspen Extreme, as I like to call it, because Aspen Extreme is one of the greatest movies of all time. It's really terrible, but I love it. Is that the one that you made me watch? Oh yeah, I love that movie. It's so bad. Uh, 1995, Fear No Mountain, just an awesome um, ski t-shirt with the extra thick collar. Um, this is on a single sports tag. Um, but love it, love it, love it, love it. Don't you even look at that. Turn it's it not even on. Stop it. Oh, she's so rude. Stop it. Now, I love this t-shirt. So, you know, I always pick up like Christian t-shirts, Jesus t-shirts. This one is a little bit different because it's very much in the style of like the 80s, early 90s, mid 90s. Um, uh, bedhead. Yeah, kind of like bedhead. But this one's actually from 1989. And uh, this one, it says, go against the flow.
it's got like all the different it's got shark and piranhas and different fish but then it's got the jesus fish there going in the opposite direction uh, it says go against the flow and then at the bottom it says don't be conformed to this world but be transformed and it's romans 12 2 um and then it like gives another verse you're supposed to read apparently but this was from uh living epistles which is uh living epistles is the is a brand of christian clothing and this is probably like the second one i've actually found with this tag um, but this is just a really cool with what with what's really in style right now, just in general, like '90s and '80s stuff. Um, it's pretty cool to see to find one that's that's like got the the Christian uh, slant on it. So with the little Jesus fish there. Anyway, just a cool shirt. As Jacob says, Christian core. Yeah, Christian core, Jesus core. Um, very cool shirt. So I'll probably list this one for like a hundred because I, I get really good money for these. And this one is one that like I bleached the crap out of. So it's in a nice, uh, really nice condition. Now it's got, it's nice, super bright, white. white, just, yeah. Very cool shirt. I love it. All right. Let's see what I got here. Oh, this one is just weird. Liz, are you still here? Hello, uh, Karen. Lavender clothesline popped in. Hey, what did you I miss? You missed a lot. You missed a lot. But you didn't miss this. And I hope Liz is still around because I think she's really going to like this one. Uh, this is like some sort of like, I guess it was a sleep shirt. I don't really understand. But you know, you'll know, you understand once I show you the whole thing. But first of all, jazzercise. So who doesn't love a little jazzercise, guys? And it has it's like cool, a cool, like, like it's a like jersey. a football jersey style. Yeah, like a jersey uh, shirt. So, you know, so if you're really into jazzercise, this is awesome. And if you're from Colorado and you love jazzercise and you also love your Broncos, well, then on the back, you get to sport your Broncos. This is a cute sleep shirt. Yeah. So, Corey, I, I picture you liking this one. Corey's <laughs> a Broncos fan. Yeah. So, I just love this. I think it's weird. Like, I don't know if jazzercise and Broncos did a thing together. It's just I kind of know. an odd double branding kind of thing. So, love it. Love it. All right. Almost as good as mouser size. Yeah. Wow. That's old. Uh, some more snack tees. This one's on a No Fear t-shirt, a 90s No Fear t-shirt. Uh, so it's got the No Fear on the front. The tag is No Fear. And then, but then the back of it, uh, it's like a double branding thing um, with stickers. It says, gotta have nuts and Snickers. So Inappropriate. Inappropriate. Are nuts allowed on eBay or just no nips? Nuts are okay, but no nips. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so it says, gotta have nuts, Snickers, no fear. I always do well with no fear stuff, but then you add to it that it's actually a snack tea with Snickers bar. I mean, come on. That's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. Uh, single stitch made in the USA. Awesome shirt. Love it. Love it. Love it. What love are you going to sell that this, for? This I paid like maybe 10 bucks for, and I will sell it for, um, this 75. one I'll probably sell for at least 70. Yeah. So. Let's see what else. We got a couple more things here. Um, this really cool 1989 uh, Paul McCartney t-shirt. Now this is that series of t-shirts where you could take the express bus from Las Vegas sponsored by comp and you get to go to the show in LA um, so this one, I don't even know what I'm going to price it at. I haven't looked up anything comparable. Tommy, you're bad. I'll try to sell it for a couple hundred. <sighs> Are there naughty things happening over there? You guys always in the chat. Seriously, you guys have dirty, dirty, dirty <laughs> minds. Every one of you. Yeah, well, we're talking about nuts and nips. All right. This is a cool uh, periodic table t-shirt. I think I paid I like either like five or ten bucks, maybe. So Geek Core. Mm -hmm. Geek Core. This is Science Core. Um, this one is from, I thought it had a date on it. Yeah, 1993. Um, it's got some wear, some discoloration on it, but I'll still probably try to sell this for like 60 bucks. Um, just a fun 90s. Jacob says they're keto days. friendly. Oh my yeah, gosh, you guys are killing me. Yeah, you get all that protein. So killing good. me. So good. So good. This is why, this is why <laughs> <laughs> we can't hit 10,000 followers in two years. Because people don't like nuts? What's up with that? Oh. Anyway, this one's super tiny. But this is an awesome uh, 80s. It could be 70s even because it's got, it's on like this old, these old tags that didn't even have, have like a brand, yeah, uh, no a brand, brand on it. So a lot of the times this, this is something like maybe Fruit of the Loom or something like that. But they didn't even bother branding a lot of the blank t-shirts uh, back in the day. So this could be as old as 70s. Um, but 
I'll have to look up the Saab Turbo. It kind of looks like it. When that car came Saab. out. So it could be like late, late 70s, early 80s. I had a boyfriend that had a Saab. Yeah. So, but I love it. I think it's a cool shirt. It's pretty small, but uh, it's a cool t-shirt, cool design. It had a stick shift in the middle. It's a pain in the neck. Yeah, pain in the neck, man. Pain right. in the neck to I got, me. I got a few more left, but they're pretty cool. This one, I love this. This is uh, Voltron. So this is like, uh, this was like an 80s, um, I think it was 80s, maybe 90s. Uh, Japan, Japan, Japanese, like animated series. Um, I Wasn't don't know. Wasn't Voltron pricing. a Transformer? No. Didn't I say this before? And yeah, you, but you, you naysayed me because it's literally its own show and it has nothing to do with Transformers. So yes, I did naysay you. Um, mm -hmm. that's not what this is from anyway, but this t-shirt is like totally destroyed. It's got holes it is just like super worn and faded, super thin. Um, I'm going to try uh, try to get a couple hundred bucks for it. Yeah, it's pretty ratty, uh, but I'll put it up for a couple hundred. But I think I paid like 20, 20 bucks for it at yesterday's fits made in the USA. Um, but just a really cool, somebody's going to have some serious nostalgia for this. And hopefully I'll be able to get a good price on it. Speaking of Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog. Look at this sweet, the green blues. This is uh, Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog. Out. Rap tea? It's not a rap tea. <laughs> it kind of looks like one. It, Come on now. No. Uh, and then it's got some awesome songs on the back here. Amphibian Boogie. Got Frog Legs. Being Green Blues. It's not easy. I miss Piggy Blues. I need some green. Good loving Piggy. Kermit and Featuring Miss Piggy. Uh, I got to get hopping in Worried Frog Blues, but pretty awesome. I love it. This one, again, I think I paid like maybe 10 bucks for it, but I'll try to sell it for 60, 70. I think that's great. I think it awesome. looks like a rap tea. <laughs> I think you should totally call it a Kermit rap tea. That's funny. <laughs> no, it's not going to no, be a See, Kermit. she doesn't think I'm funny. I think I'm funny. <laughs> You're ridiculous, is what you are. Uh, I've got this, this is the Marvin the Martian, his dog, canine. Um, I don't know what I'm going to price this at, but again, I think I only paid like 15 bucks for it at yesterday's fits. It is single stitch. It's pretty worn. It's got a pretty good fade to it, but this is a nice Looney Tunes tee. Uh, but anything Martian, Marvin the Martian related usually does pretty well. And there's you don't see much canine it. stuff. So I mean, I haven't looked it up. Maybe there's a bunch of these, but um, I'll probably price this at like 100 and hope to get a minimum 65 for it. So, <laughs> seriously, guys, I just got so much good stuff. I love it. I love it. So much good stuff. Um, Bugle Boy. That Bugle Boy doesn't usually sell that great. Uh, it's kind of it's not a very exciting brand. But, but guys, this Bugle Boy is special because it's a skateboarding one. I think I priced this at like a hundred, but again, I'll try to sell it for at least 65. I don't find uh, very many skateboarding t-shirts. So I find way more skiing stuff. Uh, look at that eyeball. What's going on <laughs> with that eyeball? Uh, but anyway, Skate Mania, I just listed this. I have it listed for a hundred. Again, it's, I want to get at least 65. Um, another one that I just listed today that's super awesome. The Supercross. Uh, this is the front Super of it. Awesome. Awesome. Super Awesome. Supercross. Super Cross 1994 Tour. And look at that, look at that uh, graphic on the back. It's very cool. Uh, this is, I can't remember his name. It's like Mike something, um, this particular writer, but I have it in my listing. And I think I listed this at 100 as well, because it's just a really nice 90s super, super cross t-shirt. And uh, I usually do pretty well with motocross, super cross stuff. I heard it's raining. Corey said it was raining too, Britain. Um, we have, I can't see outside the window because Katie has a rack covering it. So it could be raining here too. I don't know. And then I'll, this is my last one I'll show you guys, but I think it's really cool. I got this at yesterday's fits. I maybe paid, I might've only paid like five, 10 bucks for this. I uh, was just going through a pile of old dingy t-shirts. So Mayor Daily Marathon Chicago. I picked it up because I always get these running shirts and- oh, This uh, is really soft. I always get these running shirts and um, this one looked like a cool old one. And of course it's the Chicago Marathon. So I looked it up. Because, you know, I thought it was cool, but then I looked it up and I realized that, so the Chicago Marathon, there originally was a Chicago Marathon that, like, was from, like, 1905 to, like, 1920-something. The modern Chicago Marathon 
started again in 1977 and it's been going from 1977 till now. And originally it was called the mayor daily marathon because he had passed away like a few years earlier, I think. So it was like a commemorative thing to call it. the. Wasn't mayor he daily. like a scumbag mayor though? Um, I don't know all this. So there's, well, there's two mayor dailies. There's okay. he's mayor daily senior. And then the son, I don't really know. We're not from Chicago. So we, I have no idea. I think he was kind of a scumbag. For what I, he's, I don't he's know. Known, that, he's known for doing some not so good stuff. I have no idea. Somebody out there tell me, but obviously they liked him enough to name a marathon after him. Uh, but this is what's cool. When I looked it up. This is from the very first year. This is from 1977. This is the initial, the first year of the Chicago marathon, as we know it, 1977. This is the t-shirt that the runners wore. And I actually, when I researched it, I found the picture from that race and you see all the runners and they are all wearing this t-shirt. So it's kind of cool. I feel That's like cool. if, if there's anybody who collects this kind of stuff, this is a significant one just because it's the very first year of that race in 1977. So just a really cool t-shirt. Um, and I think I priced it to try to get a couple hundred bucks for it, but we'll see. I don't know That's if there's a cool one. going to be collecting it. So somebody will hate wear it. Well, I mean, and here's the thing. There are a lot of uh, politicians in every state that are hated, but are still no, that have been hated, but are still notorious and, and, you know, have a collectible, likable thing about them, yeah. whether it's like, I I'm from Rhode Island, M you know, mayor buddy Cianci was like the biggest racketeering Rico mobster mayor that, you know, used to beat the crap out of people and pee on them and went to jail. And he was still elected multiple times and is beloved. It was beloved in the city. So, uh, you know, I yeah. loved him. I thought he was great. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about that, about Mayor Daly at all. I do know that he was the mayor that was mayor during the whole Chicago seven, uh, trial, that movie that we yeah. just watched. And, uh, but it's like, so I, I have no idea. So that, and that was, that was back in the sixties. So I don't really know anything about him. But they must have liked him enough that they then they made his son their mayor as well. Um, anyway, so that, yeah. So I had a lot of stuff to show you guys this week. But that was all. those were all the highlights from those last few uh, things I got. And then I bought another big bag full of stuff on Friday when I went for the pre-sale. Um, and I got a bunch of stuff for $5 a piece. But I haven't even gone through that all yet. So that will probably be it's some a lot cool of stuff. So next time. Um, but I got some cool stuff there as well. So that's about it. Stuff, lots of stuff, lots of stuffs, guys. Anyway, appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. We will not be seeing you again on a regular show for probably two weeks. Two weeks, uh, but I will be putting that video together of some of the highlights from our trip to Georgia. A little short, little pre recorded video there. Um, I'll try to get my she is together to put that out. Mm -hmm. um, Bug her, please, because I've already been nagging her for a week. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Um, so I will do that. But otherwise, uh, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Again, we're leaving early Thursday morning. And maybe we will do a little bit of recording while we're in Portland. Maybe. She hits editing videos. It's tough because when we're somewhere, it's like, this is why I make a really bad YouTuber. When we're out doing stuff, it takes away from enjoyment to be sitting there trying to like film stuff. It's, I'd rather just enjoy, I mean, I don't even freaking take pictures for my own uh, collection. Like I'm just, I like to just, be enjoying what we're actually doing. I know, but they love your sister. I know. Maybe we do. should take some video. Well, we that's do. what I'm saying. We could potentially do a well, we do some thrifting. No Pants Friday video with her at her house. I'm just saying Maybe. we could do that. Maybe. And then you, they can get some full on binky action. Yeah, but then she clams up and we want to go on screen. Nah. Yes, yeah, she does. We're going to get some She's liquor. done it twice. We'll get some liquor in her. She didn't have any liquor mm -hmm. in her then. Yes, uh, East Coast Thrifting. Yes, camp is happening this summer. In-person camp is happening this summer. Unfortunately, Katie and I will not be going to camp this year, uh, but we will be back next year. I actually do not have any girls that are in my age bracket for my camp, for my cabin. Not that I couldn't be used somewhere else in the camp, but this is uh, we have a lot going on this year. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a good year for me to skip if I need to. Um, because uh, knock on wood, thankfully, we don't have any new little girl campers. Um, you know, it's it's a catch-22. We love to have kids join our camp and, and come every year. But that means they had to have been hurt for that to happen. Yeah. So, uh, you know, knock on wood, uh, there have not been any that have been injured to come to our camp this year. So my kids have all aged out to the higher bracket, the higher uh, cabins. 
So I wouldn't have a cabin of little girls. I would kind of be an extra in one of the other cabins. So uh, we are not going to do camp this year because we have so many other things happening this year. Mm -hmm. But I promise we will be back next year. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Is there anything else you would like to say before I wrap it up? No, I'm good. Okay. That's it. Wrap it up. I'm going to go maybe find myself a little sneaky snack. I don't know. Maybe I'll eat some Cheerios. Cheerios sound kind of good to me right now. But thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We love you. We will see you around on the interwebs. And go out, do some listing, enjoy the sun, make some money, have fun. That's about it. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.